Firstly, uh, welcome everyone. Today, I'd like to say, many years ago, when we first started the shiur, we had a, uh, I'll tell you the starter. He's with us today, he moved to Jersey, his name's Albert Shakuri, Baruch Hashem. It's been years, and even though he moved, he still holds this class going on and makes sure that everything's arranged correctly. I'm talking about that the food is arranged to be here. So we want to thank him publicly that we have him here with us today. And he should, uh, he should be blessed because you know what? It's a, it's a really, it's a beautiful schut that, that he's going to take with him uh, for this world and, and for the next. You know, I'm sure he gets uh, pleasure knowing that shiur that he started many years ago is continuing and we should, we should continue and we want to thank him publicly now. You know, he knows even though he's not here every week, but he's here every week. He's here every week. So Albert Shakuri should thank you very much again. Rabotai, we have Leluni Shmad Yosef Chai Ben Rozav Yosef Ben Chaton Chatun. This is uh, Joey Saada, uh, um, uh, his grandparents come as for Joey. Vegam Chaim Ben Achel Bezal Hashem. Shoshana Bat Frida. Vefashlema Shno Ben Achel. Chaim Ben Esther Bezal Hashem Vefashlema. Menachem Ben Simcha. Okay. Rabotai. David Yonatan Ben Moshe Bezad Hashem. Rabotai, we got to understand this. Rabotai, we have to understand this Parashat Shavua is loaded. When I say loaded, I mean loaded. And uh, I'm going to present to you something, but you have to pay attention to the events, what's going on. So you got to, I know we're eating right now, but you got to pay close attention. You ready? And I know we have a very, very, very smart individuals in the room. And I like to ask, I like to ask, everybody knows that there was a plan. Basically, Yosef sets up his brothers by planting a goblet in Benjamin's sack. Yes? Yes? Now, I want to ask you, they finally catch the brothers, and what do the brothers say to answer Yosef? And I'll read you the Pasuk. They say, Asher ito mavadecha vamet. Whoever, whoever has that goblet and you find that goblet in his sack should die. You hear that? Heavy. That means right now what Yosef, this is by the way, this is before Vayikash by the way. This is Basha Miketz. It's, it's, it's Perik Memdal at the end of Perik Memdal, Perik uh, Pasuk Teth. It speaks about that. It says, listen, whoever finds it in his, if you find that goblet in his pocket should die. You got that Bibi? You heard that? What's a goblet? Goblet. What's a goblet? Explain what's a goblet. It's a big cup. It's like a cup. It's a glass cup. It's a special cup. Amen. It's a special, it's a special cup that they, they put in Binyamin's sack that the what to catch them. Oh, look what you guys did. Look, you're already stealing from us. You just got it. You're stealing from us. So it was a big uh, 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 debate. So they say to Yosef, we can guarantee that nobody of us took it. And if you find the goblet in his pocket, in his bag, then kill him. That's how confident. But they don't end there. He says, He says, not only that, we'll be your slaves. So notice what he says. First thing he says, well, if you find it in anything, he'll die. And we'll all be your slaves if you find it. Got it? Now, let's see the end of the story. The story continues. And listen how everything changes. Listen how everything changes. You ready? Right after that, it says, they finally found it in Benjamin's sack. So now, what, what has to be done now in this situation? Who do they have to kill? Benjamin. Benjamin. Who is slaves? All the, brothers. All the brothers. But listen to the pasuk right after. Right after, a little a few psukim later than this, it says, Yehuda tells Yosef, Mano maladoni. What should we tell you? Mane daber, man it's What should we? What should we answer you? 
you caught us. You caught you caught the goblet. He says, Hailokim Matza et Avon Avadecha. Hinenu Avadim Ladoni. We're gonna be your slaves. Gamma Nachnu. Gamma Sher Nimza Hagavia Beado. What does that mean? What does that mean, BB? He came special from, from what's the, Manhattan special to, to, to Brooklyn to hear the class, Baruch Hashem. So we're going to ask him again. He knows very big, he's a big hacham. He comes from good roots, by the way. His lineage is Kaz Kassin. His great great grandfather was uh, Ham Yaakov. Uh, down to, to, what's it called? Uh, he's the chief rabbi in our community, his great grandfather. And his great great grandfather was Ham Yaakov Kassin. It's not a joke. So he's going to explain to us. Eh? Let's see. It says, he says, if the Yehuda gets up and says, Oh, you're right, you caught us. What does it say? It says, we'll be your slaves. What does that mean? Is there a contradicting to what the brothers said, yes or no? And yet, if it yes, then what is it? What is it? What changed? What changed? What changed was that now they're saying, we're going to all be your slaves. Don't kill Binyamin. We're going to all be your slaves. Yehuda takes, takes that, that back. And what does Yosef say right after? Vayomer, chalila li ma'asot zot, ha'ish shechim sa'a gaviyah b'yado, hi'yeli ha'evid. He says, no, we're not going to play this shtick. Even though you said, all of you are going to be my slaves. Nah. Only Binyamin will be my slave over here, and everybody else can go. Have a good day. Now, did you just see, in a matter of maybe 10 psukim, back and forth contradictory things being going back and forth? Yeah, and I read it to you in the psukim. And it's so hard, because you read this parasha every year, and you're like, what is going on? What is going on, Dachi? Like in the beginning, the brothers say, "You find it. Whoever you find the goblin in will die. Everybody will be slaves." Then he says, "Oh, by the way, Yehuda takes everything back. Everybody's going to be a slave." Then what happens? He says, "Oh, Yosef says, no, no, no. Only you, Binyamin, will be a slave. Everybody's free." You know what Yehuda does after that? Yehuda after that. He goes by Yigash Elav Yehuda, and that this is this week's parasha. And he goes, and he's ready to go out on a full blowout war. Goes on to say the midrash. If you read the midrash on this, it's the most fascinating midrash. Read the Ba'am Lo'ez about this. Most fascinating Ba'am Lo'ez you'll ever see. The fight between Yosef and Yehuda at this point. It's not a regular fight. He told his brother Naftali that runs fast. Go around, go around the city. Let me know what's going on. And he comes back, he says, oh, by the way, there's, te- there's 12 jurisdictions. And we have to know there were nine brothers at the point. Because Yosef was, was, was Yosef. Binyamin was, was, was over there. Shimon was in, in, in Jerem. They took, they took Shimon. So now what happens? They're nine brothers. You know what, you know what y- Yudah says? Don't worry. Every brother will take one jurisdiction, and I'll take three. I'm ready to go out, blow out war right now. If they don't take out, if they don't, if they don't let Binyamin out, I will literally wipe them out. And not only that, they, they, they're threatening. And then one of the they bring down that that even Yehuda was so so heavy. I believe it was Yehuda. Ephraim, they like they kicked one of the pillars to show how strong the might is, and it started shaking the the, the palace. It was it was the craziest fight. They say blood started popping out of Yehuda's eyes. Midrash says, literally blood ready to ready to go out to blow out war. But my problem that I have is, first of all, I don't understand. They're getting a bargain. In the beginning, they said if they find the goblet, whoever found the goblet will die. And now, the end result is, Yosef says, I won't kill him, but I'll keep him as a slave. So why is Yehuda so fearful in order to get his brother back? He's getting a bargain. Am I right? He's getting a bargain? Yes or no? He's getting a, and Yehuda himself says, take my brother a slave and take us all as a slave and we're good. Now Yosef says, no, only being a means going to be a slave. And now, you, now Yehuda is ready to go bowl out like that? What, what, what changed? Everybody hears this question. 
It's a solid question. Al Sheikh speaks about it. He's going to give an answer. I'm going to tell you the answer about it. But it's a very heavy duty question. By the way, a lot of Mephashim speak about this question. Furthermore, if you look at the whole Vayigash, the whole beginning, the Torah doesn't have one extra letter in the entire Torah. And if you look in the beginning, the whole Yehuda speaks to Yosef. And he doesn't even say Yosef. He says, He says, this is the whole situation. We came to you and he asked us if we have a father, we have a brother. I told you that we have a brother. And then after he asked for a brother, he asked me to bring it. I brought him. Yosef knows all this. Why is it so important that the Torah itself goes out of the way and tells us what Yehuda is telling Yosef? Oh, by the way, you should just know. And it keeps on going. If you look at the Pesukim, it says, You asked us if we have a father. We answered, you have a father. Oh, you asked if we have a brother. We have Yelid Zekurim Katan. You asked every question we the, the Vayigash in the beginning is a repetition of what happened. Why does the Torah specify a whole repetition that Yehuda is going back and forth? Yosef knows that! Yosef knows the whole situation. Why is Yehuda repeating the whole story? By the way, we came here, he asked us this, we answered you this, then he asked us this, then we answered you this. You have to do that. Everybody hears that question as well? To answer this question, you must understand something. We must understand something very important. And that is, I'll tell you a story of Rabbi Yuchum Lubavitz. I believe it was the Alta Mikelm or Rabbi Yuchum Lubavitz. There was a, just a new sefer that came out. And I got it. It's called Rabbi Yeruchum. Rabbi Yeruchum Lubavitz. I urge everybody, if they can get it, they get it. It's very high levels of Avodat Hashem. And when I talk about high levels, I mean very high levels that you can't even imagine. In you know, you know how like you, you know these people, people are wow, these guys are very successful. Been wow, how do he do it? Rabbi Yehuda Lovitz was like the next level of a servant of God. It, it's ridiculous, and it goes through how one time he had he had leg pain. I'm not sure if it was Yehuda or the Alta Mikelm because it speaks about both. Alta Mislabadka. It says one time he had leg pain, and he went. And he did Cheshbon HaNefesh. You know what Cheshbon HaNefesh is? Cheshbon HaNefesh is you're going to contemplate nothing in life just happens. If you're going to get a tooth pain or something like that, it doesn't just happen. Something in your life you did that, that, that triggered. You know, one time when Moshe Feinstein, they said one time he was having like a heart pain for a little bit, all of a sudden it stopped. And he was thinking, oh my goodness, what, what, what was that? And they said, Rabbi, you're this age. Uh, what do you expect to happen? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it happens. What happened? It stopped? So, yeah. It died? It's not working. And at all? It stopped twice. Yeah, it said All right. So it says like this. So, 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 so he says like this. He says that, uh, that the, 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 the heart, his heart automatically, like it stopped a little bit. And then he went back and he did a cheshbon nefesh. And he said, oh, I remember when I was, I was a little young. And I laughed at somebody in class. So because of that, Hashem is giving me that kaparat avonot over here. You know Rav Shlomo Shodron? You ever hear Rav Shlomo Shodron? Amazing, fascinating story of Rav Shlomo He was the called Magid Mirushalayim. He was the Magid. What happened was, he would always come to America. Fascinating story. He would always come to America. And when he was in America, he always stayed by a certain, certain family. And he had loyalty, because it says, the Torah teaches us, by the way, the rabbis teach us that loyalty is very important. So let's say, for example, a person always, let's say he's always a guest. Let's say you have a rabbi from Israel. You know him, you know him very good. And he always comes to your house every single time he comes to your house, right? So loyalty is, he'll always come to your house. The year after, the year after, the year after, the year after. Now all of a sudden, let's say imagine you have the rabbi, and now he becomes the chief rabbi. Now, who, who's going who's gonna to get him? The biggest people in the community. Oh, he stay. No. But what does he do? Loyalty. Who did I stay by the whole entire time? This person? I'm going to stay by this person. You understand? So that being said, that being said, what happened was when Shomosh drawn one time, he was at a certain Achsania, which was his host. And his daughter was getting married. And his host told him, listen, Rabbi Rosh you come to us every year, please, come to the wedding. Come to the wedding. 
At that time, he was close to 75, 80, around 75 to 80, around 75, 76, like that. And at that, like the, that year, he decided, that year he decided, he's not traveling to America anymore for whatever reasons. He says it might be a little bit older, not older. I'm not traveling to America. But he would travel to London because London was about an hour and a half to two hours, I mean, three hours from Israel, something like that. So he would travel to London, not to, not to, not, not, not to America. Anyway, as he's in London, he trips and he falls. As he falls, his students are there and they're all picking him up. He's like, no, no, no don't pick me up. Where have I? He just fell, let's pick you up. Wait. He's sitting there for maybe three minutes. Now the, the people are scared. He says, okay, now you can pick me up and you can book me a ticket to go to New York. He says, what? Rabbi, maybe you're not feeling well. I know you just fell. Please, let's take you to the hospital right now. He says, you hear what I just said? Book me a ticket to New York right now. Say, so, okay, they see that he's, he's all there, everything like that. This is so much drawn. They book him a ticket to New York. And he gets to New York. Uh, you were and, and as he gets to New York, what does he do? He gets to the Sheva Barachot of this, this girl that he was, he, he was always staying by this family. This family's daughter, Sheva Barachot, the last one, he was able to go to that Sheva Barachot. The last one. So he said, Rabbi, what are you doing here? He says, I came to show my respect. So he did Cheshbon and Efesh, and he said, what's the reason why this happened? Must be I didn't go to your daughter's wedding. If I didn't go to your daughter's wedding, maybe this is why what's happening over here. He went all the way back to New York. You know what's going on? The rabbis did Cheshbon and Efesh. There was one rabbi that said, why is my leg hurting? He went back and he said, oh, this past Sukkot, when I walked in the sukkah, I didn't walk in fast enough. I should have went with energy. That's why my legs are hurting. The, 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 the highest levels of Cheshbon and Efesh. The brothers, the same way. They did something called Cheshbon Nefesh. They thought, by the way, if you want to bypass any Gehinam, this is what Vigna Miller says, every night before you go to sleep, you do something called Cheshbon Nefesh. You go through your day. You go through your day from the beginning to the end. And you start contemplating. How did I do over here? How did I do with this? Let's say you wake up in the morning. How did you wake up? Did you wake up with strength? Did you say the Brakut HaShachim with Kavanah? Did you put on your Talit? Did you You pray to him in Yad. And you make Tshuva. If I did or if I did, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do it. Or I'm sorry, Brakut HaShachim, I did do it. And you strengthen yourself. How did you do in your work? Were you honest in your business? And you start thinking, maybe I shouldn't have screamed at my work, or maybe I shouldn't have screamed at my this. And then you start thinking, maybe I shouldn't have screamed at my wife. And you start contemplating, how did I eat? Did I say bracha? Did I not say bracha? Did I say with kavana? And you, you go through the whole Cheshbon Nefesh every single night before you go to sleep. And it takes some time, but it's worth it. It's worth it. You do tshuva all your life. So at the end of the day, the brothers themselves are thinking, what is going on over here? And if you look at the Pasuk very clearly, when Yehuda says, what does Yehuda say? Yehuda says, Hineni, avadim ladoni. We're going to be your slaves. Gam anachnu. Gam is extra. What's gam anachnu mean? Also us. Also us. What's also us? Every, everything is, 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 is them. Right? What does it mean, gam anachnu? What does it mean, Gama Nachnu? It should have said, us, not also us. What does the Basuk say? We'll be your slaves, and also us. And also, what's also? So, the Al Sheikh says on this Basuk, it means, it means Reuven. Because the brothers do a Cheshbon. And they say, what's the only sin that they have in their life? It could be they made a mistake about Yosef. And therefore, the only reason in their life, they're doing Cheshbon Nefesh right now, the only reason why they should be getting punished, the only thing, if maybe, and even though they had it, maybe it's Yosef. That being said, he says, wait, we're all the brothers right here. Who wasn't involved in the sale? Out of the brothers. Who? Reuven. Reuven said what? Throw them in the pit. So they threw them in the pit. And after when Reuven left, they sold him. You got it? 
So when the Pasuk says, Hinenu avadi, Hinenu avadim ladoni, we are going to be your slaves. Gam manachnu, gam is extra. What's, it should just said, Hinenu avadim ladoni, anachnu, will be. What's gam? Gam is referring, the Al-Sheikh says, is referring to Binyami, to the Uven. Because you're going to say, I, <coughs> Reuven deserves it as well. Why does he deserve it? Because in essence, even though he didn't, in the, he wasn't in the actual sale, but he was involved in putting him in the board. So God, he's not in the actual sale, but he also deserves a punishment. But then it says, Gam Hashem Nimtza Gavi However, the, what happens is, Yehuda realizes, what does Yosef do? Yosef says, who's going to be the only one getting punished? Binyamin. Then the brother says, wait, this is not the punishment that God's giving us. Then they said, now we got to fight. You got that? You didn't get that? I'll say it again. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. They did cheshbon and nefesh. This is what's the only sin that we possibly have. Possibly. It's only the sale of Yosef. So if it's the sale of Yosef, who's involved in the sale? Everyone's involved in the sale. If everyone's involved in the sale, why is Yosef only picking on Binyamin? If he's only picking on Binyamin, must be that this is, not, this is not from Hashem right now. This is not what Hashem's doing for us. If that's the case, Yehuda says, we are going to fight a war. You hear, you hear the back and forth? In the beginning they say, yeah, we'll all be your slaves. Yeah, we'll all. But the second, why? Because the Cheshbon and Nefesh is, we deserve the punishment. That's why God's punishing us. Because we sold Yosef. But the second Yosef says, only Binyamin, must be that's not the punishment. If that's not the punishment from God, then we'll fight a whole, a whole bowl out war. You hear, you hear what's going on? You hear the Cheshbon? The Cheshbon is amazing Cheshbon. And that's why, you hear that? It's a beautiful Cheshbon. And that's why if you look in the Psukim, the Psukim are a, 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 a very... Uh, Added. You don't need all these extra psukim. Yehuda tells Yosef the whole story from the back end. We know the whole story. Yosef knows the whole story. So a lot of Mephashim explain. A lot of, listen to this. They explain that really Yehuda understood that the per, they, Remember, they don't know that it's Yosef. They still think it's, 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 it's a king of, of, of Paro. So when they're going there, Yehuda is thinking in his brain one thing. One thing he's thinking. This person that I'm standing near has absolutely no power. And therefore, he's really making a prayer to Hashem. And he's saying, he's pleading with God, even though he's talking to him. But he's really pleading to Hashem. You know how sometimes you go to the doctor and you say, Oh doctor, my head's hurting, my throat's hurting, my this, my that. You can't put your trust in the doctor. You can't put your trust in the doctor. The pasuk says, Verapo yirape. This pasuk in Bavakama says, the pasuk, Verapo yirape, mikan nitan reshud lerofel rapot. The Gemara says, from, without this pasuk, you wouldn't be allowed to go to any doctor. Because we have this pasuk, you're allowed to go to the doctor, and the doctor's allowed to give you healing, and this, and that, and that, and that. Otherwise, without the pasuk, you wouldn't be allowed. But you're allowed, and you have to. Now, now the pasuk said, now you have to go. But when you're going to the doctor, you have to know 100% that it's not the doctor himself that's going to heal you. It's Hashem that's going to heal you. And therefore, when you're talking to the doctor, I have this pain, you know, I didn't mean to... So, Yoda, in a sense, is making a prayer. He's not talking to Yosef. He's making a prayer to Hashem. He's saying, Hashem, this is what happened, Hashem. We went this, and we went that, and we went this, we went that. And the Rokeach, he says this three times, it says, Vayigash. One of those three times, why, why, why do we walk, Vayigash means to, to come close. Why do, we, why do we walk three steps to Hashem, come close? Because it says three times, Vayigash in the Torah. So it's like, basically over here is like a prayer that Yehuda is actually, uh, in a sense, doing. And therefore, the whole Yosef and back and forth is all Cheshbon Nefesh. What's Cheshbon Nefesh? They're thinking about God. With all this going on, and their father there, and this and that, they're all thinking one thing, Cheshbon Nefesh. God, God, God. You look later on, the Pasuk speaks about Binyamin. And it says that Yehuda tells Yosef, Nafsho Keshura Benafsho. What does that mean? Binyamin is very tied to our father. Why is he tied? So you might say, because he's the youngest. 
Bin means the youngest. So therefore, he's very, very kashur. He's very connected to his father. However, the Avraham bin Avraham doesn't say like that. Listen to what he says. He says, why is he connected? He's so connected with his father because they learn together. When a person learns with somebody else, Torah, there's not a physical connection. There's a spiritual connection. It's two souls that are learning together Torah. It's more than just a physical. You know, one Rebbe in our yeshiva was leaving. The yeshiva. He was there at the yeshiva about four or five years. And he was teaching. And we made a seudat preda. Seudat preda means like a, good, a farewell party, goodbye party. And we were making the goodbye party. He got up and he said, this connection that I have with this yeshiva is not just a regular connection. It's a spiritual connection. It's a connection that when a person learns together with people, you connect and you, and you it's beyond. You know the Gemara says, Oi chavruta, oi mituta. You ever hear of that? O chavruta, o mituta. What does that mean? If not for my chavruta, he'd rather die. Why? You know Rabbi Yohanan, when Anish Akish died, he was looking all over for a chavruta. Where's my chavruta? Where, where can I get a chavruta? I need a chavruta. Because this, it creates a spiritual connection. You know, and that's why it's so important that a father should actually learn with his child. A lot of fathers... They'll take their sons to an to a outing, to this, take them to play sports, great. You know, they'll take them to play football, they'll play them basketball, they'll play them to baseball, great. That's all a physical connection. And, and you'll connect with your son. But now when you open up Torah learning together, you're on a whole different level. You're on a level of nafsho kishura ben nafsho. You're on a level where, where, where it's not just a physical thing that's coming together and that's bonding together. It's more of a spiritual thing that's coming together and coming together. And that's this pasuk over here. It says, v'nafsho kishura ben nafsho. How is that? Through Torah learning. When you learn that, already you understand you're in a different level of league of uh, spirituality. I like to go on and move on a little bit over here. And it speaks about Yosef. Again, Yosef again. What does he say? It says Yosef sent Agalot to his father. He sent wagons to his father. And the Pasuk where it speaks about Yosef sending caravans to his father, it says, Vatechi Ruach Yaakov Avihem. The spirit of Yaakov got uplifted when he saw the Agalot, the chariots. And as she says, why? What, what, what happened over there? So it says, if you look, if you look, it says, because Yosef was learning the parasha of Egla Arufa. Agala is caravan. Egla Arufa is something else completely. But, since they were learning like that, it says that he saw the fact that Yosef was still learning, even in a place of Egypt all by himself, and he remembered what he learned last. It gave appeasement to Yaakov. Because Yaakov wasn't, good, Yosef is still alive. That's great, Yosef is alive. But is he alive and he's religious? Is he alive and learning Torah? So who cares if he's alive? Very good he's alive. I'm very happy that he's alive. But how is he doing? So right away, Yosef sends back <coughs> Agalot. What's Agalot? Agalot is these caravans. What's these caravans? These caravans is to remind Yaakov the last time we learned, we learned about Agla Arufa. This is a hint to what I'm learning. This is a hint, by the way, you should just know, I'm still involved. I'm still here. I'm still in my learning. Wow. Then he got appeased. He's happy now. Baruch Hashem, my son's religious. He's still religious with all this, with all this uh, craziness. You know, Yaakov, when, he, uh, when he's about to leave and go down to Egypt, Hashem says something amazing. And I'd like to read you this because it's an amazing thing to, to see. It says, 
Hashem talks to Yaakov and tells him, Vayomer Anochi, Ha'el Elohe Avika, Al Tira Merda Mitzrayim. Don't be afraid when you're going down to Egypt. What was Yaakov afraid of? What was he afraid of? What was he afraid of? So there's a lot of there's a lot of answers to this. But I'll give you one answer that I like to read you from the Sforno. Sforno says something amazing. It says over here that maybe, maybe he was afraid they'll intermarry. They'll intermarry. Jews with Jews with with the, uh, uh, out out they'll intermarry. And if you look at this forno, he says like this. He says, If they would have stayed here, meaning if they don't go down to Egypt, they would have intermarried if they stay here. But being the fact, they won't be intermarried. It's the total opposite. So don't be afraid. Yaakov is afraid. I can't go down to Egypt. Why can't you go down to Egypt? Because if you go down to Egypt, what's going to happen is they'll intermarry. So, ya- so Yaakov is afraid of that. What does he do right after? He says, no, 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 don't be afraid. Why should I be afraid? He's guaranteeing it. But what's the guarantee? You know what the guarantee is? Hashem is saying it to Hashem. Hashem is saying to Yaakov. Hashem is saying to Yaakov. But the question is, how, how, does, how, how do we put a guarantee like that? You know what he says? He says, Ki lo et lechem. Because the Egyptians are not going to eat. They're not going to let them come together to eat together. How does intermarriage start? Come, have a drink, have a this, have a that. And therefore, because of that, they wouldn't be intermarried. Why? Because the Egyptians won't allow them to have bread together. Think about it. There's going to be a famine right now, right? <laughs> You're not going to be invited to the Egyptians' house to have, 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 have some bread. No, you go to your own house. So because of that, he tells them it's even more so. The fact that you're coming down, you'll have even more. You hear that? You hear that, Cheshbon? Because you're separating, you're going to have even more. You know, a lot of times a person says, anti-Semitism is on the rise, anti-Semitism on the rise. But I have news for you. I have news for you. Hashem knows what He's doing. And sometimes you realize that, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens now? If somebody doesn't want to marry you, right? Let's say, uh, if they don't like you, they're not going to marry you, right? So sometimes they say, oh, wait, wait. They might have something on you. Oh, uh, I'm not marrying you. Oh, what do you mean? It's so bad. There shouldn't be. But whoa, now that there is, I'm staying away from you. I'm not marrying you. You hear that, so it was the complete opposite. Yaakov, you're scared to go down? I know you're scared to go down. I know why you're scared. This phone says, I know why you're scared. You're scared because uh, they might have to marry. But I'm guaranteeing you, if they would have been here, they would have been into marriage. But if you go in there, they wouldn't be into marriage. Why? Because they themselves are going to separate you. <laughs> you have nothing to be afraid of. I'll just say one more point over here about um, about Yosef. How if you look, Yosef tells his brothers, Yosef tells his brothers, um, um, I want you to tell my father all the kavod they're giving me over here. Now, the way that seems is like Wait, it's like bragging, right? Doesn't it seem like that? It says, the psukim, where it speaks about it, finally, he, they're going back, and Yosef tells the brothers, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, <coughs> he says to him like this. He tells them back. Um, when, he, when, he, when he keeps on speaking about it, he says, when you go back to my father, tell him all the kavod that I'm getting. Isn't that isn't that bragging? What would you say? Isn't that bragging? How do you explain that? How do you explain that? How do you explain that? It says, uh, uh, um, um, he says, when you go to my father, tell him all the kavod that I'm getting over here. Huh? 
um, um, when well, when you when they tell you save back. He says, "Ani Yosef, or Hevi Yosef, the Chav Geshu Naalai, Al Tatzvo Ayakun Echem Ki Mechad Temoti." He goes over Shchenu Kim Lefnechem. He writes over here, "Vata Lot Lot Shem Nei Masina Paro." He continues and says, "Oh, tell my father the honor that I'm getting over here." Right. So the question is, isn't that isn't that uh, 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 bragging rights? So the answer is very simple. And the answer is, if you look later on in the Parashat Shavua, you'll be able to, to answer this. <sighs> Here. Maharu v'alu elavi, go to my father, v'amartem elav, ko amar ben Chai Yosef, samani Elohim la'adon, God put me in charge of the whole Egypt. Right? Right? Go tell them. Go tell them that. Go, go tell them the kavod. He says, like, what's going on? Why is that so important to tell him that I'm the Adon? So, you could say, don't be afraid to come because I'll take care of you well. Right? But it says more than that, by the way. Um, um, Later on, when Yosef meets his father, it says when Yosef meets his father, the pasuk says, "Vayere elav." What does it mean, "Vayere elav"? Rashi says in that in that aspect, "Yosef nire elaviv." What is Rashi adding extra? "Yosef nire elaviv." What does that mean? Obviously, the Pasuk says it. So there's one Mepharesh that explains like this. When you go to see a father that you didn't see him in 22 years, 22 years you didn't see your dad. 22 years. How do you, how do you, how do you approach that? Do, do you, are you self-centered? I'm so excited to see my father, which is that's the natural way. Or... I'm so excited for my father to see me that I'll just stand there and I'll make sure that he sees me properly. Yosef was the second aspect where he says, I'm going to just stand there. I'm going to make sure that I'll be seen to Yaakov in such a way where he'll have that ana'a. And therefore, what he's, what he's trying to say, Yosef, when he tells the brothers, go tell them the kavod that I'm getting in Egypt, is one thing. It's a father, the biggest pleasure that a father can get from his son is one thing. You know what that is? When he sees his, his son on his feet. He sees his son doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's married, or he's kids, he has a business, he has a thing. He's, he's, he's taking, Baruch Hashem, he's, he's good. That's the biggest, that's the biggest tana'a that a, uh, a son can give to his father. Oh, by the way, Daddy, Baruch Hashem, we're doing good. We have this, we have that. And a lot of times in life, a son will be doing very well. But they won't tell their father. Right? Either maybe because, oh, if I tell my father I'm doing so well in business, he's going to ask me for money, which is, <laughs> sometimes people are crazy like that. I don't want to give my father money. Right? But, or, I know my father's involved in many, I don't want my money going there. Or, or many, million excuses. But it's vice versa. The biggest pleasure you can give to your father is when you tell him, by the way, Baruch Hashem, we're doing good, we're picking up, we're this, we're that, he gets the Hana'a. And I'll tell you, a lot of times when, uh, when a lady gets pregnant, a lady gets pregnant, and, 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 and it's rightfully so that the in-laws know, the parents know, and sometimes they'll know only what? Only if everybody else knows. Ever happened before? <laughs> Ever happened? I'll give you an example. One day, Bezat Hashem, you're going to get married. Amen. Your wife is going to get pregnant. Amen. She's going to be, by three months, you could see a woman if she's pregnant, yes or no. By three months. Now what happens? Your parents, I'm not saying you, but your parents find out, or your in-laws find out that she's pregnant. Oh, by the way, is, is so-and-so pregnant? Is, is, is she pregnant? Yeah. So, there's two ways of doing it. Waiting until it's shown, or giving them the nachat a little bit before everybody else gets it. 
It's the kavod. It's the kavod that they receive before everyone else. Yeah, how important that is. It's vital, by the way. Because a lot of people don't know this. And a lot of people are like, no, my mother's a big mouth. If I tell her, she's going to do this and that and that. And that. No. <laughs> it's not the right Heshbon. Heshbon is, <coughs> my mother and my father, they deserve the right respect. And they should know. You get that or no? I'll never forget when I was getting engaged. When I was getting engaged, I got engaged. I was getting, I got in, I was getting engaged that night, the night of, that night. And in yeshiva... Right? My future wife-to-be, her older cousin was in the yeshiva. And he knew that I was proposing that night or I was going to get engaged that, that, that time. I remember him coming over to me and saying something. He's like, you know, we're going to be family soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, you can tell me a little bit of the news. I know already. There's that, that. Be nice. Kavod. He was like one of the rabbis over there. But it's kavod to tell the parents in advance something good that's happening in your life. You're buying a house. You're in contract. It's something good. Why, why do you have to wait until you close on the property and then tell your parents? I'm not saying to go tell the world. Tell your own parents. They, wow, you're in contract. I'm so happy. It's even opposite. They'll give you the beracha that it should be matzliach. They'll give you the beracha that it should be successful. That's even better. They're saying, wow. A lot of times you'll see it. Yeah, I can't believe it. Or, or, or you'll have a guy sometimes. And he's going out with a, with a girl. And he's uh, proposing. And, and his parents don't even know that. What, 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 what happened? How can you tell me? This, that, that, that. And therefore all these aspects is a sensitivity. It's a sensitivity. But especially children to their parents. They have to give that honor to the kavod, to the parents, that they have the ability to know, and they should know. They should know. How about that? This is uh, some great lessons. Any other questions on the parasha? You have anybody? Huh? Yeah, I have a question. I'll, I'll ask one more thing. I'll ask one more thing before we end. And I just want to discuss this. All right, you want, you want to ask? We'll ask. We'll stop it here. We'll stop it here. If, if, the, if Yosef took them... Stop.